If I were to ask you to read the pixelated text in this video, you'd probably say that it's impossible. But, just by analysing the way the pixelation changes from the movement in this video, we can get this. Now if I were to ask you to spot the stealth fighter as it would appear on your unzoomed cell phone from 30 kilometers away in this photo, you'd probably say that's impossible. But, by using this brand new pixel motion of voxel grid projection technique I made, I can tell you, with absolute confidence, down to the meter, that it's this tiny little smudge right here, and all the information I needed to be able to find it was a few low resolution videos just like these. Not only that, but the same technique could be used for so much more, whether it's detecting asteroids way ahead of time that could otherwise level entire cities without warning, or majorly increasing the resolution of MRIs and other scanners pretty much for free, all without AI. So the first step in pixel to voxel projection is to determine what pixels we want to select for when we project them into the voxel grid, and since at this distance F35s will only be a few pixels across, instead of trying to recognise them, we can use our knowledge that fighter jets tend to, you know, move, to help determine where in the image the fighter jet is by subtracting the colours from where it was before from where it is now in a sequence of images, leaving us with an image that only shows how much each pixel's colour value changes from the movement of objects between each frame, allowing us to notice all sorts of previously hard to see details. The problem with this is that on a 2D image, it is pretty much impossible to tell whether this motion is from a slow moving, close by bird, or a far away, fast moving F-35. But if we take these images and project a ray from each of the pixels back out from the camera in the direction that they were taken from into a grid of voxels and add the motion of that ray's pixel to each voxel it hits and then repeat this from a bunch of different cameras, we get this. Because as you add more and more randomly oriented cameras, it very quickly becomes statistically impossible that there will be this many high movement rays intersecting into this one spot without there actually being something moving in that voxel to cause it, which is what makes this technique so powerful since the cost of adding each camera to the network grows linearly, while the rate at which each camera gives more information grows exponentially due to the increasing unlikeliness of all of them having more movement in the same place. So, even if the image is extremely noisy, and there are objects such as birds and flies in front of the camera, they will appear as these thin lines that don't hit anything else and very quickly average out, especially since you can repeat this for each frame in the video as they move apart. And while theoretically you could track a stealth fighter at night if you had a lot of cheap cameras, cameras, or cameras with NVGs on them to see fighters as they block the light from stars across the Milky Way. This technique still works if you switch out your cameras to work with thermal infrared, which, while being more expensive, has the advantage of using lower frequency light, which is far less prone to the Rayleigh scattering that blocks visible light at ranges above 150 or so kilometers away, meaning you could easily spot fighters from well over 100 kilometers away at night using thermals, and while we're used to seeing radar displayed like this, since it shows more info to us humans, it can also be represented like this, meaning all the same principles apply, meaning you could upgrade existing radar systems for what is essentially a software patch. Not only that, but it can also run extremely efficiently, as it's basically Minecraftified ray tracing, and my code already only takes a second of run on my PC off of a single CPU thread, so once you use a graphics card for this, it should run in real time, even off of a potato. Pretty much the only slightly hard part about using this is finding out the camera's orientation, since small errors in orientation will add up over large distances, but even this is trivial to fix. I honestly estimate it would only cost at most a few hundred million dollars to be able to detect any F-35 over the entire US from over 100 kilometers away, and given the size of the cameras, it really wouldn't be that hard to hide and network these cameras together in other countries and on Seaboys to know where planes are everywhere in the world. And despite their smaller size, this technique works even better for locating drones, since over shorter distances there will be much less atmospheric distortion, meaning you could use this to cheaply and passively detect any drone within a few kilometers of a camera array, which in particular means it is incredible at detecting any birds that are anywhere near flight paths at airports, which is normally basically impossible to do accurately, but with a few cameras it is now easy to track the precise location of even thousands of small birds down to a few centimetres before they end up in the Hudson River. Which brings me to the point that the real purpose of this video is that since this is a new technique that hasn't been used to detect stealth fighters, despite the billions of dollars we have spent on that, then what else can you apply this to that can go on to improve the lives of billions of people, as this works on far more than just detecting single faint points such as stealth fighters. For example, 
you can improve the effectiveness of MRIs and CT scanners by using the normal images as well as the motion images, which, due to the unlikeliness of movement being correlated while shifting between multiple perspectives, contains so much hidden data that is always thrown away. Since roughly speaking, while the normal images tell you where the details are now, using the difference images on top allows you to both add to where those details are now and subtract noise from where they were before, which sharpens the image and filters out noise like crazy. And even if you can't move your object, because motion is relative, you can still use this technique to majorly improve the effective resolution of traditional scanning, such as myography, pretty much for free, by splitting up your exposures into steps and moving your sensors a bit between each step and projecting both the normal and difference of density images back out into a grid. Not only that, but this is perfect at massively improving our ability to detect asteroids, especially those which are big enough to level entire cities, but not large enough to reflect enough light to be detected, which becomes trivial once you apply this technique using telescopes from around the world and especially in space. For example, try and spot the asteroid in this photo. Impossible, right? Well, normally the way this is done is using our old friend motion extraction to find bright spots as they move across the sky from a single telescope, but if you use voxel projection, you can use a parallax which normally prevents you from combining the light from multiple distant telescopes from around the world to your advantage, as the small amount of light that the asteroid adds to the noise in the image, which would normally get entirely lost as noise, will instead get added to the voxel grid and exponentially accumulate statistically in ways that don't even happen with long exposures from single telescopes. And that's before you stack these in a sequence. I cannot begin to overstate just how much easier it is to detect them with this. And best First of all, this doesn't require any changes to the normal scientific operations of these telescopes beyond just changing the basic scheduling to line up with each other. Unfortunately, because this technique is new, there are no decent examples of consistent data with two distant telescopes pointing in the same direction at the same time, which is a shame, as I've already made an example of this that works with any FITS file with HCI coordinates in its header, and literally the only data that does exist is probably the worst example possible because the only reason they are pointing at the same place is because they are pointing straight at the sun. It would make detecting Planet 9 trivial, even using existing telescopes, which I was originally planning on doing, but as much as I want to name it after my cat, it also would take a lot of time to go through the data sets, and after recent tragic events, I realised how good it would be at detecting birds, so I figured I would post this to get the word out before they cause another plane crash. I am planning on making a video where I use this to detect space junk and find asteroids in the near future, but for now all of the code for this will be in the description, and feel free to share this video with your friends. So since I am but a humble broke just about to graduate uni student, if you have any access to good data or a platform for me to explain this better on, then here's my email. Anyways, thanks for watching. This video is getting kind of long, so I'm going to put better explanations of harder to edit concepts in the description. Here's a list of things that you might be confused by or think that this is, but feel free to comment them down below anyways, just for the fun of it.